We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. One, One thing about, about the midterm midter elections that has stood out in my mind is that there is a movement happening to imply that only one race and their particular opinions matter. And the communists, the socialist democrats are pushing this all over, not only television, but it's also being published, or actually that goes in your mailbox. And uh, this video today is about that subject. The simple fact, the simple reality that as they have been uh, practically shoving down our throats about black lives matter, now they're saying black votes are all that matter. The ads in the last two weeks that I've been getting relating to like the governor's race, secretary of state, um, all the politics, they're advertising that it's the black vote that counts. It's the black vote that is all important as far as the overall election results. And uh, you're going to see these placards, these postcards that they've been sending out to people all over our state in Georgia. The uh, main part of the governor's race was the... Uh, uh, this, this lie that's being perpetrated by the socialists, by the communists, that the Republican Party intentionally purged black votes. And that's why in these ads you're going to see, there's an emphasis about uh, every vote counts. They're not saying all of us count. And I'm talking blacks, whites, Latinos, whoever. The, the ad, ad promotes that it's a black and a black, black alone who counts in the overall count, the overall scheme of our judicial and electoral process, that a white person now is considered to be the outcast. And you can see that in the way they advertise the voter. You do not see a Latino face. You see a black you do, you do not, not ever see, see a white, white face in, in these ads, ads because the blacks, blacks are saying that wherever you live, the blacks, the blacks are subjugating all the other races. races. That's, That's why they, they promote it like that in the ads. They're, they're saying that you as a white, white voter are now enslaved, enslaved to, to a black whose opinions and their particular voices, voices are all that count when they tally up those votes. So when you go to the polls, they cannot legally purge your vote because they, don't, they really don't know who is and who is not a black voter. They don't know who is a white voter. But they're saying that because Brian Kemp was our Secretary of State, that somehow he had the ability of purging only black votes from being able to be counted in the general election. Now that's not only bogus, it's, it's an outright lie because he had no control of any votes being of a particular person's race because we don't do that in Georgia. Your vote is totally uh, confidential, it is, uh, it is undocumented as far as what race you are, what gender you are, it's just counted. And the blacks, and especially Stacey Abrams, who is a socialist communist Democrat, is saying that somehow Kemp had this uh, advantage of knowing who the votes were based on gender, based on race, 
and that he purged black votes from the actual election. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up in this is that uh, she's suing the state of Georgia on that very specific grounds that he somehow had the advantage as Secretary of State before he finally resigned to uh, purge certain votes. I'm going to bring up something else that I found laughable. During the time that the uh, campaign was going on, there was an incident that took place at one of the county offices where there was a busload of senior black voters who came to vote early. And this is what happened. When they came to the precinct, to the actual polling place where they were supposed to vote, the representatives at the office found out that there was an actual candidate who was running on the bus. And they forced all of these people to leave the property because by law you cannot campaign for any party while you're at a polling place. Well, the blacks claimed that they were being targeted as racist because they were black, they were there to vote, and they were forced off the property because the guy was there with them and he was actually a candidate. He was running. I don't know specifically for what, but they, uh, the news media, I mean, they grabbed at it, and, and as they've done on every instance, they, they promoted the Democratic viewpoint uh, the, uh, the socialist, socialist democratic, democratic vote viewpoint, viewpoint that um, uh, they're, they're being sub subjugated, uh, they're, they're being singled out and targeted from being, being able to exercise their, their rights as, as, as black, black Americans, Americans from voting. voting. And uh, th they, they didn't bring, bring it up, the fact that there was, was a candidate in the bus, bus, but it was so smallly mentioned. It's, it's like, like looking at fine print, print on a, on a, on a uh, contract. It is so small, you can barely even read it. That's, That's what, what the media, media did. did. They, they brought, brought up this whole thing, thing and they, they just blew it out of proportion, proportion thinking that uh, they're, they're going to incite the blacks to retaliate because uh, these, these seniors, seniors who were black Americans, Americans came to the polling place, place got, got out, out, wanted, wanted to vote, and, and were told, you can't, you got to leave because they had the candidate on the bus. And by law, you cannot campaign or be on... The, the actual property of a polling place if you're there to promote your campaign, and that's what he was doing. And the media totally suppressed that part of it. They brought it up only one second in the entire story, and the rest of it was about this overblown uh, issue that the blacks were uh, suppressed from being able to vote. And now, to get back to these ads that I'm showing you in this video today, these promote the uh, specific uh, black lives matter, black votes matter, and that's racist. That's what I've been trying to say in this video so far. Why do the blacks get away with racist uh, propaganda? And then you flip it and you say, well, the whites are the ones that are being targeted for racism. Because they're saying, well, whites do this, whites do that, it's wrong, it's this, it's that. But when a black person does it, uh, it's, it's just like uh, ignored by the media. And so I figured instead of trying to write to this group, it's called uh, Georgia Engaged. That's who did it. And, and obviously, I can tell you honestly, this came from DeKalb County, it came from Decatur. And that's like, that's the hometown of ghetto mafia. Um, in other words, black votes, blacks, period, matter there and nobody else. The other one was called um, Voters for Georgia. They promote the attitude, again, that in Georgia, only blacks count in the terms of votes you as a white cannot be subjugated because when you go to the polling place, the only other way a black can stop you is practically to stick a gun at your face and say, you're not voting, get out of here. That's the only way they can do it. Because once, you, once you've cast your ballot, it doesn't identify who you are. So they, cannot, they can't literally stop your vote 
unless they forcibly tell you at the polling place you can't vote. And I promise you folks, that is coming. The blacks are already intimidating whites to the point of saying, we count and what we do count. But you as a white mean nothing. And, 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 and all you have to do is see how they're promoting their agenda, their viewpoint. And it's called the blue wave. Well, I, I got to reiterate this fact. It's not a blue wave. It's a red wave. Because communism started in places like Russia, with Stalin, with Marxism. Um, it progressed to Cuba. It progressed into North Korea. And this is really what... The Democratic Party has become. It is now a socialist, communist regime in this country. And the only people who count, according to the Democrats, are blacks. Blacks, women, Latinos. That's it. Other than the group that represents the Socialist Party of, of Georgia, and that's the, uh, the LGBT. Lesbians, gays transgenders, bisexuals, uh, any and every person that's really, un they're unnaturally living their lives the way they do. And I'd like to hear somebody contest that and say, oh, no, you're wrong. Because you know what? You were created, you were made a certain way, and for somebody to say that uh, a lesbian has more rights to force their lifestyle on anybody else is just uh, uh, lying to themselves. If you were born a certain way, then that's exactly the way you were made. And there is no such thing as evolution having made a mistake in your instance or your particular situation. There is no such thing. What it's about is an individual person believing there's something they aren't. And that's why it's more a travesty, a travesty and a tragedy to them because they're trying to pretend there's something that they aren't. These are the groups that the Democrats are pushing in society today. The immoral, the unethical, uh, the degenerate. That's why Ellen Degenerate is so liked by people, because she has a perfect last name. And these are the people that specifically have the only voice in society now. If you're white, unless you're gay... You are uh, ostracized. You're, 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 you're blatantly ignored by society uh, because uh, children today growing up have absolutely no clue of what's right or wrong anymore. They have no clue as to what this society has taught them. And essentially it's this. Everybody's a global citizen which means we have no boundaries, we have no sovereignty as far as each nation. This is what communism and socialism does. Destroys borders, destroys boundaries, and basically everybody becomes a universal unit instead of it being each individual person matters. Each person represents um, their own uh, identity. Because individuality is, is destroyed by communism and socialism. And these are the things the government don't want you to ever, ever hear. Because that's what the communists, that's what the socialist democrats are doing. That's why they're specifically targeting one race being more important than everybody else. And that's what they advertise all the time. We have power. We have uh, no accountability for what we do. That was, that was evident, evident when Brett Kavanaugh was being uh, uh, sworn in or confirmed as a U.S. Supreme Court justice. Not one of the women who made the accusations against him during his confirmation hearings were ever arrested for the lies that they actually made up about him. And the uh, judicial system says when each of those women made those accusations, they had to sign a affidavit to the effect that if you lied under oath in these claims, it was considered a felony. If you commit a felony, you are in jail, okay? You're, you're arrested. None of them were arrested. And to this day, all of those who uh, made up lies, even about President Trump, 
who continue to lie, they have never been indicted for one thing they've done. You got people right now who are basically turning red coats. They, they represented Trump during the time when he first started as president. And now they're sort of like doing a 360 because they know they're already in trouble. So they're trying to get themselves out of a large sentence and say, well, I lied, I didn't, I didn't mean this, I meant that. And it's all to turn against Trump. And why are they doing it? Because the Democrats are saying to them, you come to our side and you help us and we'll get you off. Because that's what they did about those women that lied against Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, the, Democrats the Democrats are the same, same ones who are behind this uh, this total hate campaign against Trump. It has been that way since day one. And I count the highest ranking group in the Socialist Democratic Party as the media itself. That's why you have fake news in the media all the time. They hate Trump with a passion because Obama tells them to say that to the American people. And if you're already a zombie and you have no concept of right or wrong, you're going to believe it because that's what Obama wants you to do. He wants you to believe these lies that they're getting away with. And they are. So to get back to my video again, black lives should not mean diddly. It shouldn't mean squat because everybody is supposed to be equal. The blacks now say, you aren't equal, you are not at any stage equal or even at our level of equality, specifically saying whites, specifically Latinos, and all you got to do, folks, is look at the ads that they're publishing about right now in our midterm elections, the runoffs, everything. Uh, black votes matter, white votes don't. Uh, in other words, your opinion, if you're white, means zero. If you're black, you can do and you can say anything you want, and the government won't do anything to you. Uh, as a matter of fact, the government will endorse whatever your opinion is. They will stand by you. Uh, you've got so many people, Oprah Winfrey, Whoopi Goldberg, all these high, high, high society of black entertainers who have condemned President Trump but have never had any evidence to say it's true, here it is, this is what's happening. It's all about just uh, slander against people they don't like. And that's totally unethically wrong to do that to somebody else, especially if you have no proof. The Mueller, Mueller investigation, investigation is an absolute sham. sham. They, they brought up, and I'm and talking, talking about the communist socialists, socialists, the Democrats. They, they brought, brought this thing up about Mueller doing an investigation about Russia because it's all they had to go on. Uh, they never indicted, by the way, Hillary Clinton for having collusion with the Russians about uh, buying this uh, dossier that she got about, about Trump, which turned out to be a total farce. They don't bring that up. Because they don't seriously want to investigate anybody else except President Trump himself. Because they don't like him and they don't want him to be the president. You know what? I, if I were Trump, I'd say this. Too bad. Get over it. Get a life. That's exactly what I would say if I were President Trump. I tell all these hypocrites who are condemning President Trump over and over again. I would say either shut up and get on with your life or be arrested and charged with slander and uh, obstruction, obstruction, because, because that's, that's what, what they, they do. do. That all, that's, that's what, what they've been, been doing ever since President Trump was elected as president. president. They've been lying, cheating, uh, uh, making up farce after farce, after farce about, about President Trump, Trump and, and, and it's all untrue. And, and, and to, to, my, to me, the collusion is not Russia. The collusion is the Communist Democratic Socialist Party creating lies and using the media to cover up for their lies. That is the collusion. If anything, anything in our political system, system it's the communist Democrats, Democrats themselves doing what they're doing and getting away with it. That is collusion. So, so folks, if you don't see what President Trump has been getting away with or being condemned for, then you don't want to see anything.
All you want to see is the lie that Trump is, is guilty of something and that he is the one that should be um, lynched. And it's, it's, it's unfair, it's untrue, it's a lie. And I tell you, no president's ever been subject, subjected to this sort of thing ever in history. Obama, who did more things that were totally illegal than any president before or since, and they have totally expunged his, uh, his presidency from any accountability or uh, liability for what he did as president of this country, and they will not even talk about it in the media. They will never talk about what he did, what he got away with, because in their minds, they think, President Obama is innocent. He's innocent of everything. That's what they think. In their minds, that's what they think. They think that Trump is, is, is the bad guy. And uh, it's, it's sort of like it's a child that's having a temper tantrum. But it's gone way beyond what any parent would ever tolerate against a child that just cannot accept reality, that you're not going to get your way and you're not going to be able to do this and get away with it. The Democrats are getting away with it. The Democrats are doing a temper tantrum against President Trump, and they continually are doing it. And somebody should be telling them, it's over. It's, it's done. He's the president. You cannot change what happened because nothing happened as far as collusion. Making up a lie about Russian involvement doesn't help the country to come together. It does not create unity. It just keeps dividing this nation more and more. And what is the outcome of a divided nation? Communism and socialism grabs at every single opening, and they'll use it to destroy America, to bring it down as a nation. And we are there. We are there now. And I tell you, the only person behind this whole thing, as I've said before over and over, is Obama himself. He is the dictator of socialism that makes America what it is now doing, and that is to destroy itself as a nation. The Japanese said that during World War II. If we ever destroy America, it would be from destroying them from within their own borders. That's what Barack Obama did and is still doing 10 years to the day. He's still destroying America by killing the unification of America as a country, destroying our individuality as a nation by destroying our sovereignty, by destroying the individuality of each American citizen. I saw a video last week about Obama. Couldn't believe this. They constantly say in this video I've seen that uh, if, if their slaves' ancestors had fought against their masters, it would not have changed anything because they still would not have wanted it any other way. They would have been happy to continually just live the way they were, and the reason that slavery is so prevalent in what people talk about today is because blacks never have gotten beyond that, the fact that they were slaves, and they cannot accept that fact. And if you're, if you're stuck in one philosophy, one mentality, one mind about something that happened in your, in your racist past, you're never, never going to get beyond, beyond that. You're, you're never, never going to be better because, because you don't want to be better. You just want to drag everybody else into that that, 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 that pity that, that blacks keep bringing up about the fact that they, their ancestors were slaves. You cannot progress and be better if you don't see beyond that. And that's why the motto, those who don't learn from the past are forever condemned to repeat it. That is exactly what blacks do today. They waller in their own self-pity that their ancestors were black. If you want to be better as a race, you forget about what happened. You look forward. You don't keep bringing up the past and think that it's going to cause 
sympathy for your cause because it means you're using past events to better yourself and that's not productive it is not a uh, positive thinking it's not a positive step in the right direction because you're keeping yourself going back to the past over and over again and anybody who knows anything about a culture's history they didn't get better if they kept going back to what they were or having reiterations of their past uh, their past ancestors the only reason America is as great as a nation, uh, at least until Obama became president, was because we always looked ahead. We always looked positively towards the things that we could accomplish, not what we had done or what failures we had. Because if we kept looking at it like that, we would have never even progressed as far as we have as a, as a nation today. Blacks cannot see that. They don't want to see that. They want to bring about this 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 fatalistic viewpoint that because a black was a slave, therefore everybody else now must be a slave so that blacks feel like they are superior to you. Do you not see that in our society, that they're doing that same philosophy? They're promoting that same ideology to society by saying, uh, we're better than you. And then when you ask, well, why do you feel that way? Because my ancestor was a slave, that's why. And they would keep bringing that up over and over again. And uh, Obama said that during that, that video. Uh, nobody cares about what uh, hardships you had in your childhood. Nobody cares about what your race endured. And, of course, what is he doing? He's basically saying, this is what we must do. This is what has been so good as far as pushing socialism and communism. You keep reiterating the same stuff, whether it be good or bad, and then it keeps creating more and more chaos, more and more diversity between whites and blacks. In other words, it keeps inciting people to feel that hatred because you're pushing your rhetoric on everybody else, and it, <laughs> it's not good. It's not positive. It's, it's, it's destructive. And nobody, and nobody wants, wants to hear, hear that. that. <coughs> so that's, that's, that's what's, what's happening. happening. America's, America's never going to get better. better. It's going to get worse. Because, because that's, that's the, the edict that communism and socialism is about. Destroy. 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 You destroy things, and then in the long term, con communism has always been like the subjugation of the masses. Everybody's either content because they all have to conform to what the government tells them or in the case of some who did revolt they were jailed killed silenced whatever that is what socialism is the subjugation of the masses of america and they're doing that in a way where it's obvious that it's not going to get better you can see that it's going to keep getting worse it is never going to get better in america and the more blacks do these things there, there will be a civil war. war. There, there will, will be an uprising between whites and blacks. And, blacks. and I, I think, think blacks, blacks want that. that. They, they want another civil war. war. Then they can say, this time we win, not the whites. Because, because the whites were fighting were themselves. themselves. They, they were, were fighting, fighting each other. other. Now, now it's, it's going to be the black race conquering the whites. The whites. And then and before you know it, we probably will be literally slaves to blacks. Because that's, that's when they're going to say, there are more of us in the world than there are of you. And that's why they intend to keep pushing their rhetoric on America. Because they say, we're entitled. We've, we've waited for 150 years for retribution. And now I think they feel like they can get it. They can get it because they think we're entitled. Is that stupid? Well, hey. Look, Look at history, history and tell, tell me it's, it's not, not true. true. Don't necessarily believe that this hat, though, says that I agree with 100% of what he says or does. I mean, if, if I thought Donald Trump was a racist, I wouldn't wear the hat. 
but there, he may have racist supporters. When black people think, when see Make America Great again, the first thing we're gonna think, when was America great? <laughs> I, for one, believe that America has all, I don't agree with it because I believe America has always been great. You can't deny that it has caused some division and divisiveness. So with that in mind and knowing that, is it worth it? That is what makes America, that, 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 that they can put that on and they can have the right to, to walk into a place. So make Atlanta great again. You've reappropriated the Make America Great Again. I have. I feel making Atlanta great again has a different tinge to it because Atlanta was very well, very great. I feel about Atlanta how white people feel about America. You guys look at, at Atlanta, the South, the hat differently than maybe we would. One thing I agree with everyone is that I love America, we all love America, and we want it to see it prosper. Or has anything from this conversation changed the way that you felt before you walked in here? I think something that I'm gonna do when and if I see another person in that hat, if I feel comfortable enough, just have that conversation that we're having today because I feel like that's important and that's what's going to take America to the next level. We generally agree on, on you know, a lot of things, but the 20% or the 30% that we don't, that's what sells to the media, that's what sells to news. I, I will continue to wear the hat. Uh, it, it's exciting to see, you know, deer in the headlights when people see the hat from time to time because they've never seen one, and then be able to create a dialogue. Trump will win 2020. Trump will win 2020. He will, he will definitely Look at Morgan's win. face. <laughs> <laughs>
his name is Omran Daknesh, just five years old, and his feet barely hung over the edge of a seat in an ambulance. Dazed, he didn't cry as he wiped away blood and the I'm dust so from a building that collapsed around him in an airstrike. His silence somehow reminded the world today of its silence in the face of the atrocities in Aleppo. Omran was pulled out alive Wednesday. Five other children died when the building they were in was hit during the relentless Syrian-Russian offensive on rebel-held areas in Aleppo. The image of Omran's face spread like wildfire on the internet. One tweet called him the real representative of the Syrian people. Stop killing uh, Syrian innocent people, civilian. Our uh, children uh, need to live in uh, peace. The doctor who treated Omran said today there were many more severe cases no one is paying attention to. We uh, need to protect uh, our hospital, our doctors, our uh, medical workers from uh, airstrike. Omran is recovering. His family now wants to escape. The same choice another boy's family made a year ago, Ilan Kurdi, whose body washed up on a beach. He too was a symbol of Syria's youngest victims. Now there's a new one. Tomorrow there may be another. Richard Engel, NBC News. They've reported from around the world, challenged the powerful, and they bring all of this to every story that breaks. We've got breaking news, and it's good news. And it touches your heart. How do you even say thank you? Thank you is not big enough. I made this. Mm-hmm.